In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a really good tip, a couple of tips actually, on CorelDRAW. Now, I did check my sign software that came with my cutter, and it doesn't have this functionality. I wish it did. And in fact, I found that my sign software doesn't have a lot of functionality that I wish it had. And so I do most of all of my vector work here inside CorelDRAW, export as EPS to the sign software to send to the cutter to cut. So I am brand new to rhinestoning. Um, in fact, I don't even have my materials. I have bits and pieces of materials, um, um, but I don't have all my materials yet. But this process, I've known about this process for years, and it's always intrigued me and interested me. I just never did it. But at any rate, and part of my search to learn about rhinestoning, I was turned on to Sandy Joe over at rhinestonetemplates.com, and she was gracious enough to send me a sample one of her rhinestone fonts. And come to find out, there's a couple other suppliers of rhinestone fonts in the format that she's doing, which is as a true type font. And basically, what that means is once you have them loaded, we could just type in any word or group of words, um, and voila, we have our word typed out. So when our client says, hey, can you do cheer, or could you do my last name, or whatever the case might be, you'll say, absolutely, because I have all these cool fonts. Um, and that's great, uh, because the fonts really are that cool. But what we need to do in order to create our template, we need to specify this dot, this little dot that represents our stone. We need to specify the size of that. And you can see the dots are obviously different for the word cool fonts than it is down here for Sandy Joe. And so for my stones, I'm using SS10 stones, the, the dot that I cut out for my template needs to be 3.3 millimeters. Somebody told me that, and I said, oh, okay, that's what I'll do. And sure enough, it worked out perfect. But, so, but I've also was cautioned that it may work for you, it may not, for your particular stone, so forth. So it's something to experiment with. And of course, every size stone, you know, an SS6 or 16 or 20, they're all going to have a different size dot requirement. But for my SS10 stones, it's 3.3 millimeters is what I found works really well. So what we need to do is we need to somehow be able to tell CorelDRAW or our sign software or whatever we're using to create our artwork for our template what size stone that is that dot has to represent something and so it's really easy to do here inside CorelDRAW I actually saw this technique demonstrated for something different previously and when I was talking with Sandy Joe the other day, I was asking her about, you know, what is the best way to resize your font so that the stone is of the size that we need. I said, you know, if I'm if I'm looking to hit 3.3 millimeters, is there an easy way to hit 3.3 millimeters, or um, is there um, is it really necessary? Does it have to be 3.3 dead on? You know, like if it was 3. 297 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyhow, she said, well, if you get it close enough, good enough. Now, Sandy actually has a video demonstration on our YouTube channel um, where I think it's Rhinestone Monkey or something like that is her username on YouTube, but where she demonstrates the process. Now, when she sent me this little sample uh, uh, font file, it came with like a little sizing guide of all the different size rhinestones and the idea is, is that you put the sizing guide down and then you kinda hover over it and then you would scale your font till the dots in your font kinda lined up with your little sizing uh, guide to whatever size stone you want to use good enough and that works nothing wrong with that but when you have CorelDRAW, you actually have a tool inside CorelDRAW that's gonna make that process so much easier and precise and exact and you'll get it dead on the first time every time so let me show you how that works now what I did find out in looking at all these little dots there is some slight variance in the size of the dot itself not enough to matter but there is some 
slight difference from dot to dot in its overall size. But that's really here nor there. What we need to do is we need these dots to be 3.3 millimeters. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this font that says cool fonts. We're going to right click on it and choose convert to curves. Then we're going to right click on it again here and choose ungroup. And you can see now we have three curves, but we actually have lots of dots and we need to get down to the dot. So we'll just select one, you know, select the letter C here, right click on it and choose break curve apart. And that will give us the individual dots. Cool stuff, right? So we're just going to take a dot, right click on it and drag and choose copy here. There's our dot. Now, here's something that's interesting in CorelDRAW if you didn't already know about it, and that is we have the ability to do arithmetic inside CorelDRAW. Now, that may not excite most of you, but it did excite me when it was demonstrated to me years and years ago. Arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division can all be done right here inside this little docker here inside CorelDRAW and that can actually be quite useful. If I had an object that was say four inches right and let's just say I'm a dummy all right and I and I and I I can't think straight um, but I know that I've got a box that's four inches I need to take an eighth of an inch off of it and a thirty second but I don't know like what the decimal percent is of an eighth of an inch and a 32nd. And the real way to say is I need to take off, you wouldn't say I need to take four inches minus an eighth minus a 32nd. No, what you would really say is what, how many 30 seconds you want to take off. But then in order to do that, you'd have to have know how many 30 seconds were in an eighth. And we know that there's two one sixteenth and an eighth, and there's two thirty seconds and a sixteenth. So then, you know what I'm saying? We've got to do a lot of complicated math. You know, we have to know, oh, okay, what I really mean to say is I need I got a four inch square, I need to take off five thirty seconds. Okay. Um, so you could do math. So and if you didn't know it, it's really cool. Um, so in here you could say, um, you know, Something like, four, if your box was four inches, you could do like four inches, um, not 44 inches, but you could do four inches minus, and then you type in an eighth of an inch minus uh, a sixteenth of an inch, and it would actually give you some type of dimension. Um, that's really cool. So if I hit enter, boom, it gave me uh, 3.813. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Um, so anyhow, um, it actually, you can do math right here inside CorelDRAW. And that's pretty powerful stuff. So that was just a little CorelDRAW tip on the side of what we're really talking about here. What we're really talking about here is resizing this little dot that we borrowed from the letter C to be 3.3 millimeters. But moreover, all these dots in this word need to be 3.3 millimeters. And this is how you do it. So we are, our document right now is in inches. And of course here in the United States, that's typically what we work in is inches. Of course abroad, they work in millimeters. Um, and if we only worked in millimeters here, it'd be a lot so much more simpler, but because we work in inches, now we could change this to say millimeters. But I just want to illustrate the point. Um, if we select that dot and we come up here and we type in 3.3 millimeters, Okay, that's how wide I want this dot to become. Now notice over here, it says 100%, 100%, and we have this little lock, okay? So whatever I change my top value to, it will keep proportion because I have it locked. Now watch what happens here. So 3.3, enter, boom, there it is. Now, if you look at this, you notice that the percentage of the resizing was exactly identical on both. Both now say it's, it's 310.4% of what it was. Okay? And that's important to know what that percentage is. 
310.4% of what it was. So in theory, my theory is, if I take the whole word cool font and I resize it, I'm sorry, I already lost it, 310.4. So I resize it to 310.4, boom, in theory, if I were to select any one of those dots, I would have a dot that is 3.3 millimeters, which is exactly what I need for my rhinestone template. So let's switch to millimeters. Let's pick a dot. And lo and behold, look at there. The dot is 3.3 millimeters. And because we know that dot is 3.3 millimeters, no matter what dot we would pick, if we were to break it apart, do all that monkey business, then we would know that dot, too, is 3.3 millimeters. So how cool is that, right? So very, very easy to do. So we select our text element once we have our word typed in. Right-click, convert to curves. Right-click, ungroup. Select one. Break apart, right? Isolate a stone. Right-click. Oh, we need to do that again, apparently. So let's break it apart again. Isolate a stone. Copy it. Resize that stone to 3.3 millimeters. Make note, it's 628.1%. I could copy that, right? And then I could select this whole kit and caboodle and paste. So I don't even have to remember my math. Okay, so now all these dots should be, if I sample this first one, 3.3 millimeters. And if I sample the last one, in theory, it should be darn close. Let me break it apart. Select that last dot, 3. Point. See, it's a little bit different. Um, but I think that's because the dot itself originally was not quite 3.3 um, millimeters, but it's pretty close. Um, and it has to be because I, I resized the whole thing as one. Um, so anyhow, that's how it works. So I'll break these apart and sample those too. Uh, there, see that dot, it's height 3.3 millimeters. Um, so it should work just fine for you. And it's much easier than trying to take the little sizing guide and, you know, resize, just take this whole font and resize the dots. So they don't need a little bit bigger, no, nope, a little bit bigger, no, nope, a little bit bigger till you get it exact. It's just too complicated that way. So anyhow, that is a little tip for you here inside CorelDRAW. And remember, CorelDRAW is your friend. It loves doing arithmetic for you, um, so that should be a big help for you in your design work as well. Thanks for watching.